You send your child off to school to learn and to be taken care of when you're away from home all day. Parents trust their children's teachers to not only educate, but to also be mentors that help guide children through childhood. But that position of trust was lost inside the walls of a high school in Missouri. A young teacher was arrested and accused of a horrific crime against a 16-year-old student. 26-year-old Haley Clifton Carmack is behind bars, charged with raping that 16-year-old student. Police were tipped off about the case when a fellow student told a school resource officer the victim showed off photos of scratches on his back. The student claimed the scratches were from the alleged sexual interaction with that teacher. Investigators say Clifton Carmack used other classmates as lookouts while she raped the alleged victim. And in a bizarre twist, the victim's own father is also charged in the case. Mark Creighton is charged with first-degree child endangerment. Police say he knew about the inappropriate relationship between his son and his math teacher and allowed it to happen. Tonight, we walk you through all the disturbing facts of the case and hear from the school district about the case and the teacher now charged with rape. I'm Vinnie Politan. Thank you for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Years ago, a man named Jerry Sandusky, remember that name? It was public enemy number, number one, and rightfully so. This is a guy who had a storied career as a football coach at Penn State University, and then um, afterwards uh, had a foundation. And while he was a coach, he also had a foundation to help uh, young boys. Well, it turns out he wasn't helping those young boys. He was sexually abusing those young boys and was eventually uh, incarcerated for it. And, and really, there was no question. Like, after they convicted him, there was no doubt what should be done with Jerry Sandusky. He should go away and should go away as long as the law allows. And that's what happened to Jerry Sandusky. Right? And that makes sense. Now... Before Jerry Sandusky was sent away, a couple of years before, there was a woman named Deborah Lefave, who also sexually abused a young boy and got caught doing it. No doubt. It wasn't like, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. No, she did it. She did it. Her attorney successfully argued at her sentencing that she was literally too hot for prison. That you, you, could, you can't put her in prison. They'll just, you know, they'll just eat her alive in, inside the prison. You can't do it, Judge. And amazingly, the judge agreed. And she was given home confinement. So Sandusky, hairy old man, goes to prison. Deborah Lefebvre with the blonde hair and blue eyes. She gets home confinement. Uh, Matt Lauer comes down to interview her at her house. That's like part of her sentence, apparently. Like she, she has, she has to, she can't leave her house. So instead of going up to New York to do the Today Show, uh, they went to her and did the interview. Like so, the world at that point, really, I think we look at these cases much differently. That like an adult woman, especially if they're pretty, you know, it's one thing. But if it's a hairy old man, it's something else. But when you look at the letter of the law, there's no difference. Zero. The law does not say, oh, hairy old men get sent to prison, but blonde hair, blue eyed women, well, well, we don't want to put them in prison. We'll keep them away from the public for a little while. Maybe they, maybe they give up their teaching degree or something, but come on. The good news tonight, folks, things are changing. Things are changing. I, 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 think, I think society has waken up to the fact, especially more of these cases that we see, and the more that we understand, that, well, there's the old, oh, I wish my teacher would have done that. Um, especially when it comes to kids that are younger, these things impact them as well. They get a really warped sense of their own sexuality and, and boundaries and everything else. It, it doesn't help these children at all. They are victims, even if they're boys with their beautiful teacher. Okay, they're still victims. And I think now, I think the prosecutors, judges, 
uh, I think society is understanding that. Um, but things are changing even more with the case we're talking about tonight. Things like are really changing. So that 16-year-old boy who's alleged to be the victim of his math teacher, apparently his father knew about it and allowed it to happen or allowed it to continue, didn't report it. But somebody reported him for knowing and now he's charged. So uh, I think we've come a long way and now we're going to a place I never imagined we'd be going. And we're gonna talk about all of this tonight on this program. Incredible experts with experience in this area will be joining us. But let's begin so you understand a little bit more about the, the charges against Haley Clifton Carmack. And yes, just like many of these teachers, um, she's married or was married, I guess she's still married, children, the whole thing, like Mary Kay Letourneau. Um, here is the probable cause affidavit that was used for her arrest. Uh, let's take a listen to it. According to the confidential witness, they learned of the relationship after the confidential victim, a 16-year-old, showed them photographs of their back with scratches. The confidential victim advised the scratches were from Haley after the confidential victim had sex with her in the confidential witness's driveway. The confidential witness also stated they overheard a phone call between the confidential victim and Haley. During the phone call, the confidential victim stated it was his birthday, and Haley replied from the other end, I'm out of state, but I can send you money, baby. During the interview, the confidential witness stated Haley is too friendly with students and sometimes will dress inappropriately at school. When asked to describe what inappropriate was to them, the confidential witness stated she will wear tight or low-cut shirts to show off her and will wear tight leggings that show off her the confidential witness also stated Haley has openly discussed her personal life with the class and stated she has gotten in trouble with the administration for being too close with students. The confidential witness also stated the confidential victim had told them he was the reason her divorce was pushed through and Haley had wanted a divorce due to her husband only wanting to do butt stuff. The school was able to tell me information provided by the confidential witness so far has been consistent in what he had reported to a teacher. On December 8th, 2023, I returned to Lequay Schools to make contact with Haley and seize her phone via a search warrant. Haley handed over her phone with no issues and did not have the normal behavior of someone facing the same accusations. Haley denied having any kind of relationship with any students outside of school. I advised Haley even if she spoke to students outside of the school, there was nothing illegal about it, just a school policy violation. I spoke to her about the accusations and Haley denied all of them and stated she has never had contact with the confidential victim outside of school. On December 13th, 2023, I served Haley with a copy of the search warrant and through the advice of her attorney, Charles Fromm, she would not provide a passcode for the phone. Haley's phone was sent off to get into her phone and on December 22nd, 2023, I received an email with a PDF file from some of the content recovered from Haley's phone. The messages recovered from Haley's phone show a conversation between her and the confidential victim discussing their relationship. On January 3rd, 2024, I met with confidential witness number two in a recorded interview room. According to confidential witness number two, the confidential victim's father knew of the sexual relationship between Haley and the victim, as both had told him of their sexual relationship. The victim's father relayed to confidential witness number two that Haley and the victim have been in a sexual relationship and have used students as lookouts while they had sex during school, and that Haley had been over to the residence before she left Missouri to go to Texas. When confidential witness number two advised the father they were going to come forward with the information, he responded by telling her they are going to do it behind my back, so I may as well let it happen. He also advised confidential witness number two that he would lie for his son if he had to. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Joining us tonight on the phone from St. Robert, Missouri, the reporter. A reporter with the Pulaski County uh, Daily News, been covering this case in depth. Daryl Todd Marina is with us. Uh, Daryl, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, sir. Uh, let's begin here. Give, give the folks at home uh, a quick description of the community and this high school, big town, small town. What are we talking about here? Sure. We're outside the U.S. Army Engineer School. This is a town that's about 15, 20 miles away from what's really a college community for soldiers. 
This is the home of the Army Engineer School, Military Police School, and Chemical School. This is a town about 15 miles away where people can get a little bit cheaper housing, and it's about half civilians and an increasing number of military people choose to move out there because of cheaper homes. Interesting. So what do we know about Haley Clifton Carmack, the uh, teacher who's been accused here? What's her background? What, what's her story? Her story is that she's married into a fairly prominent extended family in this community. She's not that well known, though she's been here a long time, but she married into an important family that a lot of people know the Carmacks, and this is just tearing apart the Carmack family. People don't necessarily know her, they know the family she married into. She did divorce her husband, so she's no longer married, but she's kept the name. And. Um, th they have children, don't they? Yes, they do. So, and how prolific is she? We're looking at an Instagram picture right now. Was she very prolific on social media like a lot of the uh, younger folks are? Was she interacting with younger people on social media or was this just in the classroom? That's an excellent question. I don't have a good answer for you. She's not a person who's been on my radar screen of any kind of problem. But I can say that there are some Facebook accounts, I'm sorry, Facebook pages that deal with the Lakeway School District that say that she was well known for being very friendly with students. And that can be really good until it becomes really bad. Yeah, and that's seemingly what is what is happening here as we're looking at her mugshot. Um, how, how was the reaction of folks in this um, community? As you said, you have like half military, half civilian. Um, what sort of reaction? I know we had a story like this in my hometown, and it was like shock waves going through. You hit the nail on the head. But the initial reaction was actually flat out refusal to believe this was occurring. This was viewed by a lot of people in the community, including teachers, including law enforcement, including school administration, as unsubstantiated rumors. This was allowed to continue for an extended period of time because people flat out didn't believe it was going on. Wow. So yeah. let, let's talk about the other big twist in all of this, which is something new I've never seen in a, a case involving a teacher and a student, which is that the student's father has now been charged in all of this. What do we know about him? What do we, what do we know about his background and, and what he knew and when he knew it? Okay, as far as I can tell, this is a situation that the father had known certainly long enough that he should have had the opportunity to take action to deal with the problem. As you said earlier in the program, the probable cause statement makes clear that he knew what was going on and told police that if he tried to stop them, they'd just run around, hide, and do it somewhere else. You're dealing with a father who... I don't know how you can behave like this as a father and talk with a straight face to law enforcement and defend your conduct. Do, do we I know? Don't, I mean, it takes a lot to shock me. This did. Yeah. Because you know, in a lot of these other cases, once a parent finds out, it's, it's over. Like, it, it's ended. And they're livid, and they go down to the school, they go down to the precinct, uh, they go to the police station, whoever. Um, do we know if um, he's a single parent, or that's not clear yet? Okay. The, he's had at least two women he's been involved with. The mother of this child is from either a prior relationship or prior marriage. It's far enough back that in Missouri court records, I can't determine if they were ever married or not. He then got married to a different woman and had a divorce several years ago. So yes, he was a single father, but that might imply things I don't want to say. He's been involved with at least two different women and had a long-term marriage with a woman that ended a divorce a few years ago, but that woman was not the mother of this child. And so where are we now in all this? What's, what's going to happen next uh, in, inside the courtrooms uh, uh, there in Missouri? Okay, step number one, of course, is to extradite this woman out of Texas. And she had run down there. She had family there. 
The word absconded is used, of course. There's a quarter million dollar bond for her, which in our community is an extraordinarily high bond that indicates how ticked off the judge are of her behavior. Now, something that hasn't come out yet, and I'm telling you something I haven't yet reported, but will be in the next couple of days, she has at least three, probably four prior arrest warrants for failure to show up for court on relatively minor traffic stops. So that's part of why you've got this huge bond. When she comes back to Missouri, I expect that unlike the father, she's not going to be able to make bonds. She's not going to be able to get out of jail. She's going to be in jail for a while. You just can't have a history of four prior arrest warrants because he didn't show up at traffic cases, run off down to Texas, and have the judges be real happy with you. <laughs> that is true. That is 1,000% true. And, and how about for the father? The father is already bailed out. I haven't yet confirmed that, but I have no reason to believe that what I'm being told by law enforcement is not true. Uh, he had only, I believe it was a 50000 bond, and of course with 10% cash, he'll have no trouble bonding out. He owns a construction company in this community. He is presumably going to hire a good lawyer and try and figure out a way to plea bargain the situation. And... Ultimately, the, the, the alleged victim in all of this, uh, I know, you know, obviously we don't report names or anything like that. Is there any idea of what his world is like right now? I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. The local Facebook groups with Lakeway are saying that his fellow students are giving him high fives in the, in the school hallways. I do not know that to be true, but it's being said that it's true, it's being believed, and if it's not true, and I have asked the prosecutor if he can confirm that, and he said he can't confirm it, but it wouldn't surprise him. You're dealing, unfortunately, with something that if the genders were reversed, the teacher would be viewed as a horrible pedophile. This is a situation of a double standard that women can get away with things still in this world that a man could not get away with. Neither a man nor a woman should be allowed to do this kind of thing to a 16-year-old boy or girl. Yeah, and the law does not distinguish. There is there's nothing in any statute that talks about um, the gender of the alleged abuser, nothing, or how beautiful they are, or how ugly they are. That, that is not a factor. Unfortunately, historically, we've seen it impact. I'm hoping that things are changing in Missouri as well, because things are changing uh, in other places that I've seen. So um, uh, anything else we should know about tonight, uh, Darrell? Well, the one thing that I would ask uh, on this issue, the state of Missouri in our legislature is currently discussing what to do about raising the age for child marriage. A question that probably should be raised. I haven't yet seen it being raised by national media. We've had people come from other states in Missouri to get married to legalize underage relationships. And under current Missouri law, if the parents consent to that, nothing can be done from that point on. Now, I don't know that Mark Crichton is going to consent to his son marrying this girl. And I can't say girl, this teacher. And even if that does occur, under Missouri law, sexual relations between a student and a teacher is a crime entirely unrelated from the other crimes that are being alleged. But I expect this is going to affect our legislative debate on tightening the rules for marriage of underage people. Wow. So what you're saying is that the father consents to it. His 16-year-old son could marry her if she wanted to get married, but that would have no impact necessarily on the charges here, especially the student-teacher uh, aspect of it. Right. There are four separate charges. One of them has to do with sexual relationship between the teacher. I'm not a lawyer. You are, of course. My read of Missouri law is that three of the four charges would have to be dropped if the marriage occurred, but the relationship between the student and the teacher would be illegal regardless of any marriage. Wow. Uh, we're losing your, your connection a little bit here, Daryl, but uh, I absolutely got the, the gist of it. What great information, what great work uh, Daryl's doing. It's the Pulaski County Daily News. Um, on top of the story, Daryl Todd Marina, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. Okay, when we come back, folks, we've got a lot more to get to. Um, we're going to talk about 
the father first, then we'll talk about the teacher, and we'll also talk about this, what if they got married? Plus, coming up next hour. In Delphi, Indiana, shocking new allegations in the Delphi murder case. The accused killer, Richard Allen, says he's being treated so bad in jail that he's like Hannibal Lecter. Richard Allen, you child murderer! Why did you do it? Shame on you! Shame on you, Richard! You're going to prison for the rest of your life! Shame on you, Richard Allen! There is a sweet girl, loving mother. Erica Stefanko stands accused of luring a pizza delivery driver into a trap that ended her life. We believe it was her that made the phone call to order the pizza. During the delivery, Ashley was ambushed by her former boyfriend. She was found guilty, but that conviction has been overturned. Now, will a new trial end with a different verdict? The pizza delivery murder retrial. Live coverage begins Tuesday morning, only on Court TV. All right, folks, uh, take a look at Mark Creighton. Take a look at him. This is a father, okay? He's been charged with permitting or allowing or doing nothing when he found out that his 16-year-old son was being sexually abused by his teacher. Now, those are the charges. The 16-year-old might say something else was happening, might not consider himself a victim necessarily. I don't know. Um, but this father permitted it to go on, according to investigators, and they now have charged him. Let me read for you from the probable cause affidavit so you get some more details on the case against dad. And you're going to hear confidential witness, confidential victims. They're confidential because they're, they're juvenile. That's why, because they're underage, so you don't name them. So uh, confidential witness number two advised me she had been over to the confidential victim's residence and had spoken with the victim's father, Mark Creighton. According to witness two, Creighton knew of the sexual relationship between Haley and the victim as both had told him of their sexual relationship. Creighton relayed to confidential witness number two that Haley and the victim have been in a sexual relation and have used students as lookouts while they had sex during school and that Haley had been over to the residence before she left Missouri to go to Texas. Haley is the teacher. When Confidential Witness 2 advised Creighton they were going to come forward with the information, he responded by telling them, they're going to do it behind my back, so I might as well let it happen. He also advised Confidential Witness number 2 he would lie for his son if he had to. After receiving this information, I went out and spoke to the father, who did acknowledge that Haley had been over the residence before leaving to go to Texas. I also advised Creighton I had more information from the phones and witnesses proving he knew of the relationship and never reported any of the information. It was at this time that Creighton asked me what was going to happen next. I advised Creighton at this time he was going to be placed under arrest and placed on a 24-hour hold while I filed charges and he has been charged first degree child endangerment that's what makes this teacher student case even more different the father is in the mix let's bring in our guest joining us tonight in st louis missouri licensed mental health and nationally certified clinician sharonda brown in los angeles forensic psychiatrist trial expert witness and columnist dr carol lieberman in phoenix arizona criminal defense attorney who was was also dealt with teacher sex crimes cases kirk nermy and in seattle washington trial attorney fellow of the american college trial lawyers who also worked on the first big one of these, the Mary Kay Letourneau case, Ann Bremner. Welcome everyone. Sharonda, Hi. you specialize in child abuse trauma as a clinician dealing with these issues. There is unconfirmed reports that this victim, alleged victim, 16 year old, is walking down the hallways of his high school getting high fives. What do you think of that? Yeah. What does that mean? And, and, and what do you think this 16-year-old is going through right now? I think there's a lot of positive reinforcement. If this has been going on for a while and no one has said anything, that means that it's okay. And when children believe that things are okay, they're gonna keep doing it. I think the other part is when his dad knows about it and it's okay, and 
children would like to please their parents, they're going to continue to do the things that they believe makes their parents happy. So if he's getting positive reinforcement and it's working for him as a child, he's going to say, this is the way to go, because that's how they learn through behavior modifications. Dr. Carol Lieberman, let's talk about the father here. Um, and what his statement is, is the same statement a lot of parents make that, oh, if my, my child's going to drink, they might as well drink at home, right? Well, if my son is going to be sexually abused by his teacher, they might as well just do it here. Yes, yes. Well, the father is living vicariously through his son. You know, he's looking at this teacher and thinking, huh, I mean, the father's 36, the teacher's 26, his son is 16, and I think that he's, the father's just living vicariously, thinking it's okay, you know, thinking that it's cool, kind of like the kids who are going high five. Um, this is going to be very confusing. It is confusing already, and it's going to get worse for the victim. Because on the one hand, you know, he's gotten this approval from his father and he's all the kids think he's cool. You know, that's the teachers need to understand that, you know, if you're going to have sex with a kid in a teenager, um, you need to expect that they're going to brag to their friends about their the scratches and, you know, about having sex with you. Yeah, I, I almost feel like they don't care if people find out. It's, it's, it's how I almost like from watching so many of these cases. Kirk Nurmi, let's start. We're going to focus here on the father. What, what do you think about this twist in the case that the father is now a criminal defendant uh, for what uh, his son's teacher did and he knew about it, didn't stop it? Yeah, you know, Vinny, I handled many cases like this back in the day. And ultimately, you know, a charge like this was never made in Arizona, even when the parents knew about it. And this is so I think this is kind of outside of my experience. But one of the things that I think is so brilliant for prosecutors to do this is we've heard, you know, justification, this idea of justification thrown around. And I think when we talk about this teacher, you know, part of her, she knows what she's doing is wrong. She has lookouts, what have you, right? She ultimately knows what she's doing is wrong. But there's, she can justify it to herself, the continued nature of the relationship, because it's okay with dad. And that's where this, this charge is really important to kind of take away that justification for other teachers, other potential predators, if you will, regardless of gender, because then the parents are going to have to realize they're going to have to put a stop to this. And that justification for offense isn't going to be there anymore. All right, we've been showing some pictures. I just don't want anyone at home to be misled. It's not familiar with the story. When you see the teacher with this young man next to her, that is not the uh, alleged victim in this case. That's uh, apparently her ex-husband now. He just looks young. He's, he looks younger than he is. That is not the high school student, okay? That's her, the father of her children, for goodness sake. Um, all right, Ann Bremner, sometimes, and, and, and I heard it from our reporter, you know, if the father says it's okay, she could actually marry him. Right. And we've seen in some of these cases that sometimes the huh. older teacher slash abuser ends up marrying the student. Oh, wait a minute. Mary right. Kay Letourneau, Kay Letourneau. married right. Villy. She did. And as you know, well, no, Villy or Vinny. That was my civil case. 20, it was like 21 years ago now where um, Billy and his mom sued the police in the school district for not being protected from Mary Kay Letourneau. We had an 11-week long trial. We won. Cy Vance Jr., who was the Manhattan DA, was the plaintiff's lawyer. And I got to know Mary a lot through all of that in the many ensuing years. Yes, she married him. I told the jury that. And I said, you watch. You know, I had 10 men on the jury. And I said that old saying, she's every schoolboy's dream. Watch, they'll get married. Nothing will keep them apart. And they did. And they got married and they had raised two beautiful daughters and stayed together until right before she passed away at the age of 58. Okay, so Sharonda, if this family came to you, father, son, what would that conversation be? 
I probably talked to them about the roles. What was the father's role? We keep saying father, but that doesn't mean he was parenting, especially if he's not mature enough. And if he's living vicariously, like my colleague said, through his child, then there's a lot of age regression that's happening. And I think sometimes people, especially parents, they think that if they just give their children what they want, as opposed to just parenting, then that they're doing the right thing. So we definitely would talk about discipline. We talk about any past sexual traumas, and we just talk about the end. I think we lost. When it comes to popularity, okay. shame, guilt, or any type of behavior um, analysis with them. So I would definitely talk about things that are going on in the household patterns. If there are any issues with moms, because sometimes children will see moms in their teachers and they'll have mommy issues and they'll find that that nurturing and that care is what they feel close to. So sometimes I'd separate that for them and be able to paint that picture that these things are unhealthy habits that are playing out in real life. Dr. Carol Lieberman, do you think do you think the state should step in? Maybe they have. I don't, I don't even know. Should the should the state step in and keep this father away from this son, or would that do further damage to the son at this point? Well, um, I mean, perhaps right now, but I think that what is most important is for the son to be in therapy. You know, uh, he is going through so much. We don't know. He might have these fantasies that he wants to marry his teacher, that he's in love with his teacher and that she's in love with him. I mean, supposedly she told him that that's why she's getting divorced. Um, so maybe he does have these fantasies of marrying her. And if that isn't what happens in the end, you know, that's going to be crushing to him because it's hard for him to understand that this is not OK, you know, especially under these circumstances with the with his father's per permission. But, um, you know, it's such a confusion of guilt, shame. Um, I'm cool. I'm the coolest guy. Look at what I'm, I'm so sexy that this teacher, you know, she can't control herself um, with me. She scratches me. She's just in love with me. She she risks her, her career, you know, and her life, her husband, her children, all of this. She risks all of this to be with me. And if he, you know, if he suddenly gets a, a dose of reality that she isn't having those plans, that's going to be crushing. In addition, of course, to all the legal um, situation. Uh, Kirk, what, what are your thoughts here? And, and I spoke with the local reporter who said, you know, the, the law in Missouri is with the father's permission, they can get married. Um, do you think, do you, if, if you're representing the father and he, and he came to you, Kirk, and said, hey, you know, my son wants to get married, but they need my permission, would you have any advice on that? Once the charges are made, I certainly think it would probably be, it would aid him if that did in fact happen. But obviously then you do have the situation of contact, coercion, what exactly is going on here with this, as Dr. Brown mentioned, this father-son relationship. So it sounds like maybe that could have an effect. I know it occurred after the, it would occur after the fact and maybe probably wouldn't wipe out all the charges but in terms of his culpability what have you it may have some some, some significance to his case Vinny. sadly so let's take a look at the timeline of events and, and ann bremner i want you to pay close attention um to how this went down and i want you to, to tell me what you think about the way the school handled everything uh november 1st 2023 defendant knowingly engaged in sexual contact with the victim between November and December. December 7th, uh, the sheriff's office contacted by school resource officer about a report of sexual relationship between teacher and student. Uh, December 8th, the investigator went to the school and spoke to Clifton Carmack, seized her cell phone. December 13, Clifton Carmack served with a copy of a search warrant. December 22nd, investigator received email with contents of the teacher's phone. December 23rd, sheriff's office receives an anonymous tip that she was leaving town for Texas. Then January 3rd, investigator meets with witness two. January 4th, the father is arrested. January 5th, the teacher is arrested in, in Texas. So it was the school resource officer who right away, I guess, um, contacted the sheriff's officer here. So, I mean, that's, signif that's a significant action that they take at that moment. They're not sleeping on it. They're not sweeping right. it under the rug. Well, exactly. In our case, it was an opposite in a lot of ways. I mean, they were saying, I love you in the hallways. He was in sixth grade. Um, he was 13 when he became a father. He, and of course, he became a father twice. Now he's a grandfather. So th there were all these red flags, supposedly, in the civil case. And then my officers had found them together at a marina at midnight, half clothed, etc. So you've got all those 
you know, considerations, keeping in mind that was a long time ago and her case shocked the world. And as I said to the jury, you know, you look at him and you look at her, who would have thunk that these two were involved? You know, but we've seen many cases, including this one, since that time. And I think we see real responsibility on the part of school resource officers and others that have responsibility for child welfare. All right, folks, guests are staying with us. When we come back, we're going to shift the focus to the teacher, Ms. Carmack. Connecticut mother goes missing. Now, her estranged husband's girlfriend. Stands trial for her alleged role in the disappearance. The Missing Mom Conspiracy Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, only on Court TV. These murders have shaken our community. Why did you do it? The doomsday prophet, Chad Daybell. Prosecutors say they will seek the death penalty. A social media sensation, now a suspected killer. There she is, Haley Clifton Carmack. That's her mugshot out of Texas. Uh, they're getting ready to extradite her back to Missouri. 26-year-old math teacher accused of sexually abusing a 16-year-old student of hers. Here's a statement from the uh, Lakey School District, which says, we've been made aware of criminal charges being filed against an employee for alleged misconduct. We understand the charges are not the same as a conviction and the employees to be considered innocent until proven guilty. We must stress, however, that the alleged misconduct is inexcusable and does not meet the professional standards for district employees. The district took immediate action once we were aware of the situation. An investigation is ongoing. The employee has not been in the district since December 8th, 2023, and we do not anticipate her return. We strive to ensure that every individual is treated with respect, kindness, and fairness so that all feel safe, secure, and welcomed in our schools. Yeah, they all put that line at the end whenever there's a controversy at their schools. They always put that line there. It's not their fault, I don't think. Maybe they'll uncover something that they knew a lot earlier and didn't do anything. Um, here are the official charges against the teacher. Second degree statutory rape, endangering the welfare of a child, sexual conduct, contact with a student, and fourth degree child molestation. Serious, serious charges. Let's bring back in our guests, Sharonda Brown, Dr. Carol Lieberman, Kirk Nurmi, and Bremner. Dr. Carol Lieberman, she was married to a prominent family uh, in, that, in that town. She had children. Why on earth? Why on earth a 16-year-old? What's going on with her, do you think? She is in desperate need of reassurance that she is still sexy, still beautiful, still desirable. I mean, she's getting this. Isn't divorce. that what Instagram is for? You, you put a filter <laughs> on it, you take some pictures, and people send you stuff. <laughs> like... Right. Yes, but that's uh, that only goes so far. <laughs> um, you know, I think that uh, what strikes me, one thing that strikes me is how she's a math teacher, because math teachers, people who are really interested in math are usually more logical than she is. But that speaks to how desperate she was for this kind of attention and affection. She all, not only did she dress sexily, but apparently she was talking in class about very intimate kinds of things, like why she was divorcing her husband, just totally inappropriate in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, it was she was just concerned with with getting that getting that feeling of, oh, yes, you know, even a 16 year old, um, so, someone who's, uh, you know, especially and also a 16 year old who's going to fall madly in love with me. You know, that's very heady. Sharonda Brown, um, the, the thing that surprises me that it's. She's a mom, like she's a mom, like, and don't you, don't you kind of equate like, hey, these are my children, I would never want some teacher to do this to my children, so I'm not gonna do it to somebody else's child? You would think logically that would be the case, but I think what's happened with her, there's this thing called age regression. When adults and even sometimes teenagers are under stress, they will regress to a younger age. And I think her being in the culture, her divorce, and whatever stressors she had, I think it made it easier for her to regress back and also identify with these young children. So I don't think she even saw herself as, oh, I'm a mom, so she could you know, be able to merge the gaps, but I don't think that happened with her. I think that she became immersed in this culture of teenagers. I think she regressed 
stressed back because of the stressors. And I think that she began to really enjoy the attention of having these teenagers fall for her. So I think that that became very empowering, so much so that she probably forgot about her role as a mom until she maybe got home or did something different. But based on her record, it sounds like she has some issues with responsibility as well. So, Kirk Nurmi, what's justice here? If, in fact, she did this. Boy, you know, it depends, Vinny, because I think we're at the tip of the iceberg here when we find these cases like this. We know that there's these four charges and she's facing 25 years, and that's certainly going to hit her like a frying pan upside the head, emotionally speaking. But we have to consider the fact that the police probably haven't done the forensics on the phone yet. There's potential. Did she send images, inappropriate images to him? Did she request them back? Is this man, is anything on the phone to indicate this boy is the only one? because it's not always going to be the case that there is just one victim. So there's really the potential for more charges here. Justice is certainly going to mean a period of imprisonment, and it's probably going to mean sex offender registration for the rest of her life. And Bremner, do you think um, our system and our society has made that full turnaround to understand that it doesn't matter if you're a hairy old man or a <laughs> young, beautiful teacher, um, if the crime's the same, the time should be the same? I don't think so, Vinny. I mean, look at the movie that's out with Natalie Portman, May, December. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it or anyone's seen it, but it's loosely based on Mary Kay Letourneau and Felix Salau. And it's like a Hollywood producer said, in my case, if you squint your eyes, it all makes sense. Mary Kay Letourneau went to prison for seven years. She got out, married Billy, and she only had one victim. So these cases are just, they're, they're just different. And, and, you know, trying to figure these out and compare them as if, you know, Billy was female and she was male, I think is simplistic. I mean, she did regress. She was like a kid in high school. I mean, those are excellent points. All of her friends were like in the sixth and seventh grade. I mean, it was like basically a regret, like a childlike teacher that connected with Philly Full Out. So the, I'm not, and I'm not an apologist for her or anybody else that does this. It's just these are very intriguing cases, very difficult, but clearly criminal, clearly criminal. There was a book written about these two. It was called Our Only Crime is Love, sold as a love story in France, sold as a crime story here. So I think um, they're terrible cases. But that was a complicated one that was mine. Yeah. Dr. Carol Lieberman, we only have about uh, 20 seconds here. Okay, uh, well, I just, I, I was just going to say, Macron married his teacher, Emmanuel Macron, the, the, in France. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> she was 20, what, 25 years older than, than he was. Crazy. Unbelievable. Crazy. Do you, it, and I just want to thank everyone uh, tonight. Uh, great, great panel. Great insight tonight. And we'll obviously continue to follow this story and these charges and see what happens to the dad, what happens to the teacher. And hopefully the student, the victim is getting some help.